guys and welcome back. Um, today we're doing something a little different. I'm in my bathroom because there's lots of noise everywhere else. So I'm going to record in front of my bathtub. I'm going to talk about the basics of taking your children or your spouse or yourself keto or carnivore. I've seen a lot of questions about this lately and I figured maybe I should break it down and keep it super simple that people can take little bites of and, and realize that it's not one big giant momentous move that you make all at once, but you can do this slowly. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna give you some, some tips on doing that and break it down how we did it and my recommendations and we'll go from there. See you in a minute. With every star, we are seen a lot on Facebook lately. How do I do this? What do I do? In regards to children, spouses, or even beginning for yourself. Well, there's several different opinions out there. There's several different ways you can do this. My recommendation for most people is going to be do it slowly. Most people cannot afford to throw everything in their cupboard out and buy all new keto ingredients for every part of your house. That's the ketchup, the mayonnaise, the, if you're gonna buy um, salad dressings, everything. My recommendation is when you run out of that food, replace it with a keto version. Most people can handle that because you were gonna go buy more ketchup anyways. This time you're going to buy the sugar-free version or, a, or make your own. Those are some options that you have. It depends on your personality. If you like to cook and experiment, try making your own. There are thousands of recipes online that are free. I tried making, for example, keto ketchup. Not my favorite. I, I didn't, couldn't find one that I really liked. I could spend $8 a bottle on the keto ketchup from many companies, but most people don't have $8 to spend on a bottle of ketchup. So we ended up deciding that a slightly, not so great version, Heinz, no sugar added, which has sucralose in it, which is Splenda, is what we were gonna go with. My thinking behind that, my kids don't drink this stuff. I do tell them, okay, this is as much ketchup as you're getting, make it last. I don't just let them keep going back for more and more and more. In the beginning, I do give them more because they need to get used to things and it works as a transition. Well, it comes to a point where pretty soon they aren't even asking for it anymore because they've learned to love the things like hot dogs. Hot dogs, a lot of people would disagree that hot dogs are something you should even be eating on keto. The cheapest, junkiest hot dogs that you can get, as Dr. Barry says, are still a thousand times better than almost any of the other things that you used to eat. Baby steps, meat, even if it is processed, if you can get, we, we get Hebrew National. The reason I like that is it says beef, water, and less than 2% of junk. If the junk is on the less than 2% side, I don't mind it right now. I don't eat them too terribly often. The kids are much more metabolically healthy than we are, so it's okay for them to eat the hot dogs, the pepperoni, the bologna, the, all that kind of stuff. Yes, it is processed, but think about the other options. Rice, pasta, cereal, crackers, waffles, pancakes. That is a thousand times worse than it could be. It's okay if it's not the best. It doesn't have to be grass-fed, grass-finished meat all the time. If you can afford that, please do it. It supports your local ranchers and farmers, and it gets rid of all of the pesticides, herbicides, antibiotics, hormones, everything from the meat that could be retained. There's such a small difference. Um, there's a, a video that Kelly Hogan and Amanda Radke talk about. Amanda Radke is actually a cattle rancher and she shows the difference between grass-fed, grass-finished and grain-finished cattle that are raised basically two different ways. 
it's like a 1% difference in nutritional values. Some of the junk can bleed over. And unless you are a very, very, very sensitive individual, most of the time, nobody can tell the difference. So do what you can do. Be happy with that. Every time you run out, replace it with a keto object. Don't overthink it. Don't think that you have to go overnight to absolutely everything. If you wean off slowly, especially with your kids, you will avoid detox. Avoiding detox and the keto flu can be a wonderful thing because you can just ask Noah throwing up for three days because of detox was not fun. If I had realized that he had the amount of junk that he had been eating before they came back, I would have stair-stepped him down on his carbs. It probably would have been over one, maybe two weeks. He got the hard knock school of detox is what he ended up with. We made it through. It was not fun for anybody. My recommendation if you're doing this for the first time or bringing your children from the standard American diet is to talk to them. Talk to your spouse, talk to, you know, talk to yourself sometimes. Look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself why you're doing this. I mean, it's so much more than just a way of eating. It's a lifestyle. It's not eating things that are fried and seed oils. It is making sure that the other products that you put on your body, like your shampoo, your conditioner, your makeup, have as little chemicals and things like that as possible. It's not reheating your food in plastic containers or not putting hot food into plastic containers. Glass and metal are what you wanna put hot food into. Don't cut hot food on a plastic cutting board. Use a glass one or wait until the food's cooled off a little bit. Cut it on your plate. It's all of those things wrapped up together that can make a big, huge difference in the way that you feel and function and the way that your children feel and function. You can take it all away at once. It's not always the best option. I think most of us can't afford to do that, first of all. So replacing things one at a time and talk to your children, explain to them why you're doing this because they only have one body. They only get one life to live in this one body. And we wanna make sure that it's as good and healthy as it possibly can be. Explain to them what carb addiction is. I spent almost an hour talking to Cassidy and Noah about addiction. They had no idea what drug addiction or alcohol addiction or cigarette addiction even was. So I had to start at the very beginning and I had to explain to them what it was and then work my way up to guess what? Carbs are more addictive than cocaine. It's just a fact of life. That's the way that it is. We are all addicted to something that is just as harmful and dangerous as alcohol, cigarettes, and illicit drugs. It does the same damage in the body. That's how you end up with non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is the exact same thing that alcoholics end up with. They end up with fatty liver disease and it's caused by the alcohol. Ours is simply caused by the carbs. It does the same damage. The drugs, the, what it does to you, well, I don't know of anyone that eats carbs and gets thin like you can on meth, but you know, I'm not recommending that either. The damage that it does on a cellular level is very similar. It's destructive and horrible. And explaining that to the kids, getting them to the point where they understand that makes it easier for them to accept and follow along with what you're doing. Most people that are taking their kids keto or carnivore have a reason to do that. It's not just, oh, they're overweight, or, you know, I'm just gonna take my whole family that way because I feel like it. Usually there's a reason. They have ADHD, they have night terrors, they have type two diabetes, maybe they're even a type one diabetic. There's lots of reasons that you would wanna do this, but explaining to your kids why you're doing this is super important. I've always been a firm believer in communicating with my children and letting them know what's gonna happen. We used to have to go for WIC a million years ago, um, go get blood drawn so that they could check to see how their levels were doing before I could get their WIC checks. Well, 
I always told my kids, it's going to hurt and you're going to get to see what your blood looks like and then it'll be over. And if you can do a good job to control yourself and work with me, then we will go for a treat afterwards. I never lied to them and said, oh no, it doesn't hurt. It does hurt. You know what? So does coming off of carbs. So does giving up the foods that you've been addicted to for your entire life. It hurts. You miss those things. But what you get out of it is so much better. It's worth so much more. It's worth missing the donuts and the coffee. I now have a keto coffee. I use a keto sweetener and I use heavy whipping cream instead of the half and half. Or oh, I can't even imagine using it now, but the liquid creamer that I used to use all the time and everything. Ugh. That was my replacement. One thing at a time. We did it pretty slowly because we couldn't afford to just drop everything and you know, it was once we run out of it, then we'll replace it with a better version. Do that, try that, communicate, talk with your children. Having them help you make recipes also helps. Ask them, what do you want? You want pizza? Okay, you ready to experiment with me and let's see if we can figure out the best keto pizza for us? When they help, they're more willing to go along with you and to eat the food that they have made. Even Bella, who is a ridiculously picky eater, will actually eat what we've made if she's helped. Even if it's just turning the little thing over and putting it into the pot. Good enough. She will try it because I'll say, you made it, you need to try it. And then she's all about that. There's little things you can do like that. Uh, little tricks. And not encouraging people to say, oh, I miss goldfish. Do you remember? Go I remember goldfish. I remember goldfish. Stop doing that. We all miss goldfish. We all remember goldfish. That should say something if you can remember that. It's been years and years. Let's not talk about what we've lost. Let's talk about what we've gained. Do you remember when you used to fall out of your chair at school because you had the wiggles so bad you couldn't hold still? I remember that too. Aren't you so glad that doesn't happen anymore? Do you remember when you used to get so mad you would shake and then you would hit something and then you'd get in major trouble? Yeah, I remember that. Isn't it so much better now that that doesn't happen anymore? Do you remember when you used to have nightmares all the time? Isn't it so much better that you don't have that anymore? Focus on the good things that have come. Focus on, and if it's your kids and they're overweight, I know it's hard, but you know what? you're healthy, you can keep up with your friends now. And that's something that I think a lot of these kids don't realize they're missing out on. Um, when they're being bullied because they're the chubby one, it really can mess up a kid. And they will have, the, have to deal with that for a long time. Some adults are still haunted by the days of being bullied and they're still yo-yo dieting and doing everything they can to lose the weight, including starving themselves effectively. Keto and carnivore is a way for children to grow big and strong and healthy in the proper proportions. We're not giving them carbs. Their bodies are making the carbs when they need it and when they want it in exactly as much as it needs and no more than that. Keeping it simple, not overthinking it, communicating with your children or your spouse are surefire ways to make this easier. Don't focus on the negatives. Don't focus on what you've lost. Look at what you've gained. I guess in a way you could focus on what you've lost, the bad things that you've lost, and you've gained all of the good stuff. One step at a time, don't rush it. That will help with your keto flu and your detox symptoms. Replace things one at a time. It's very simple and enjoy your journey. If you love to create things, then try all the new keto recipes. If you hate to cook, then don't. Stick with one ingredient, whole foods. So that is a chicken, whether it's a thigh, a breast, a wing, a leg, an entire chicken, I don't care. Don't get it fried anymore, okay? What are we gonna do? Just get it broiled, get it Get a rotisserie chicken. The rotisserie chicken, even with the junk in it, is still better than the deep fried 
chicken that you used to get. Baby steps. Eventually, that rotisserie chicken's gonna make you go, I don't feel so good after I eat that. And you're not gonna get it anymore. One step at a time. If you get to a point where things are working great and then they stop working, it's time for you to reassess. What am I eating that actually does have hidden carbs or hidden junk or other stuff in it that maybe I could change up a little bit? How much cheese are you eating? How much dairy are you intaking? Because that does make a difference. There are some people who are very dairy intolerant and you don't know it because you've been eating it your whole life. This is when I say 30 days of carnivore, 60 days, even 90 days of carnivore can be an amazing eye-opening journey for some people because you take care of everything. You leave in the butter, the bacon, the eggs, the beef. And when I say beef, it's any kind of animal. No plant-based anything. You can 30 days without coffee, you will not die, I promise. And then bring the coffee back in and see if it makes a difference. But that is the way to know what is affecting you and what isn't. I've seen so many people talk about, oh, I really want to get that DNA test and I want to see what foods or the food allergy tests. There's a better way to do it. Cut it all out yourself. Eat building materials with salt, no seasoning even. You know, 30 days of salt, butter, bacon, eggs, and beef, it's not going to kill you. It really won't. And you just keep telling yourself it's only 30 days, it's only 30 days. At the end of those 30 days, you bring one or two things back in. Well, honestly, you should just do one thing. Bring it back in. See how you do. How do you feel? If you can handle it fine and it is a keto food, excellent. Keep it. Bring it back in. It is now back in your fold. Go on to the next thing. Try something else after a few days. You will probably find some stuff that you go, oh my gosh, I had no idea. I can't have that. Parsley in me? Not good friends. Just not even a little bit. But now I know that. So whenever I make something, I can just leave the parsley out of it and it's fine. Each individual is completely different from another one. What works for you might not work for your kids or for your spouse. And what works for them might not work for you. It just all depends. It depends on where they are. It depends on genetics. It depends on so many things. So when so many people say, oh, your keto macros should be this. You should eat this much fat, this much protein, this many carbs. It's a good starting point, but I've seen more often than not, it causes problems. It doesn't help people. It actually holds them back. Stop trying to meet macros. Once you get rid of the carbs and total carbs, not net carbs. Once you get rid of the carbs, you can listen to your body. If you are craving a chicken thigh with the skin on, chances are you need fat. If you're craving a chicken breast with nothing on it, you just need some protein. You will be able to learn to hear your body and your kids will too. Because I have sometimes my kids will come up to me and go, can I have a spoonful of butter? And I say, yes, you can, here's a spoon. And they go get the butter. And then there's other times that they'll be eating something else. I do want butter on that and they go, no, not right now. Thank you. And they know. They know when they need the extra fat for energy. And they know when they don't. That's amazing that my seven and nine-year-old stepkids can do that. They can look at food and go, nah. -uh. Like Noah, for example, I was going to do an interview with them. But they both ended up with a stomach bug. So we're going to put that off for a week. Anyhow, they're doing very well, by the way. Uh, Noah, he tried doing keto with his mom. She started making uh, all these new treats for them and she made almond pancakes. He had four bites and he looked at her and he went, my stomach isn't feeling very good. That kid's a carnivore through and through. He is still a carnivore. Uh, we know he got sick with green beans. He can do broccoli, but there's just really not much else he can do. But he's listening to his body. And that is absolutely amazing. And it will happen for you too. You just gotta give it a little bit of time and trust the process. Don't rush it. Anyways, I've talked way long enough. I need to get this into the editor, get it edited and uploaded. And then we're gonna go back to, we have friends coming over today. So we're gonna get back to tidying up the house and organizing and unpacking some stuff. Anyways. 
Thank you so much guys for listening to me go on and I hope that I've helped you in some little way. Please do all of the things. It helps us out so very much and shows your love and support for us. And let your friends know about our channel. Let your friends know about keto and carnivore for kids. Talk to your family about it. You're gonna get pushed back for a while, but eventually someone may come to you and go, what was that thing you were telling me about again? The more you know, the more you're able to help yourself and others. Anyway, you guys, I hope you have a good week and I will see you on the way. Bye guys. Brand new baby ducklings. I know little ones. I know. I know little one. Really? So? I gotcha. Okay. Hello, little chickies. How are you? Is it bedtime? Did we disturb you? I'm so sorry. You may go back to sleep.